Hi everyone and welcome back to AI Home Lab. In one of our last videos we introduced the NVIDIA, the NVIDIA M40 GPU and today we take things a bit further um, upgrading that build with a second NVIDIA M40 GPU and bumping up the RAM. All to see how this enhanced build can handle uh, NVIDIA's Nematron 70B model. First, I'll walk through the setup and check the performance of the build running a 70B model. And then in the second part, we'll put Nematron to the test in our benchmark categories, comparing its results to, uh, to other AI models we already tested. From setup to benchmarking, let's dive in and see what we've got. As just mentioned, we've added a second NVIDIA M40 GPU. Um, now each of them comes with 24 gigabytes of VRAM and we also expanded our RAM to 80 gigabytes, which means we included or I included um, two 8 gigabyte sticks. Uh, to kick things off, here's a quick clip of the build starting up. You notice it's a bit noisy, but not much louder, to be honest, than it was with just one GPU. Now, for this setup, I reused an old case, which was a bit tight, especially around the custom 3D printed GPU fan mounts. I had to do some internal adjustments to make everything fit. And while it works, and to be honest, I'm pretty, pretty happy about that one, um, the cable management is still a bit of a mess, with cables crisscrossing in ways I'm not thrilled about. I'm not 100% um, happy with, with that part. As for the costs, maybe you watched um, our last video about the M40 GPU, where we explained step by step how how the price was coming together, if not so, uh, um, not big of a deal. I mean, there are simply three main additions. Um, first up, obviously, a second GPU was built in, and as well mentioned before, the eight gigabyte RAM sticks. Um, I also doubled the price for the materials for the fan mounts and the fans, obviously. Altogether, that brings the new total to around 797 US dollars. A slight increase, but one that's well worth it for the performance boost. Now let's dive into the specifics of what we are running on this upgraded build. Nematron 70B, NVIDIA's version of uh, Llama 3.1. Um, here in the Q4 quantization configuration. Since LM Studio seems to no longer support the M40 GPUs, uh, I face trouble in running any models with it. I downloaded the Nematron model via Olama and ran it through the command line. To make the process smoother, I set up an easy text file with pre written commands for quick copy and paste operations on NCMD. This made managing the workflow a bit easier. And here you can see that I have both GPUs ready to run the task. Testing Nematron on the two M40 GPUs was, as expected, pretty interesting. By adding the argument minus minus verbose at the end of the command in command uh, yeah, in command line, um, I will get the results as an output of the pace measured in tokens per second. As you can see, it's not ultra fast, but the pace is quite nice for reading along with the outputs in real time. However, 
For the purpose of this video, I sped up the rest of the process after this point. So what you're seeing beyond this isn't the actual speed. Just a faster playback to keep things moving. Let's have a look at how the GPUs perform during the test. The model clocked in at about 2.8 tokens per second. Um, but for a proper benchmarking, I'd prefer a faster pace and more a more intuitive interface than what CMD offers. So that's why for the benchmark later on, I will change to a, a different interface. From what I observed, both GPUs manage the, work the workload really well. However, you might notice in the video that I didn't switch, on the, uh, switch to the GPU sensor tab, so I wasn't able to capture live monitoring. To make up for it, I've uploaded a snapshot here to show the performance. Looking at the GPU's performance during our tests, we observed distinct peaks and valleys in their utilization. This pattern arises from how model layers are offloaded to the GPUs. In our setup, um, each layer of the GGUF model is distributed across the GPUs. This distribution can lead to scenarios where one GPU completes its assigned computations and must wait for the other GPU to finish its tasks before proceeding. These waiting periods result in idle moments manifesting as valleys in the utilization graph. Now let's benchmark Nemotron 70B Instruct on Hugging Face Chat. Um, one of the fun features highlighted on Hugging Face is that Nemotron can now count letters and words, a task that's been notoriously tricky for many previous models. As proof, one can find an uploaded screenshot on Hugging Face, showing Nemotron analyzing the word strawberry, identifying all the R's and counting them correctly. Obviously, I wanted to give it a try myself. So I made this short video testing this feature and asked Nemotron to count the, the, to count the R's in the word raspberry. On the first attempt, it didn't just make a mistake in the count, it also misspelled the word while listing the letters. Um, while it did something similar to the Hugging Face example by listing and numbering the letters, the output wasn't quite right. After noticing these errors, I asked Nemotron to try again. Um, and on the second attempt, it finally got it right correctly identifying and counting the R's in Raspberry. A success? I don't know. Not without a bit of an extra effort. Let's now dive into the procedure I used for the benchmark test. The process starts with asking Nemotron a series of questions and to give you a clearer idea, I'll showcase an example, a coding benchmark question. In this example, Nemotron is tasked um, with creating a simple Pong game in HTML. When Nemotron provides a response, such as a code snippet, I review the source code in Visual Studio Code and run it to observe its behavior. This includes checking for error messages through debugging tools, but I also take note of any observation when I open and interact with the file. Any error I can find, um, I'll give back to Nemotron and let it run another solution, refine its previous coding. After every shot, I open the HTML file generated or scripted by Nemotron and inspect the page. I check if the Pong game works like it's supposed to and make sure that the code is actually embedded in the file. So, um, this way I can see if the solution Nemotron gave isn't just written correctly, but it actually works when you run it. In our benchmark, we allow the model up to five shots to refine its response. 
the scoring system works like this. The fewer attempts it takes to, uh, to produce a working solution, the higher the score. The maximum score is one per question, which is awarded if the model produces a perfect solution in just one shot. So far we tested um, Claude Sonnet, Quen 2.5, GPT-01 and now Nemotron. In physics, most performed well, um, but Nemotron struggled with one question. It found the correct answer, but gave an explanation that was completely off and didn't meet expectations. Even with a second or third shot, it would not respond in a way um, we expected. We also tested the models with a math question involving two decimal numbers and asked them to identify which one was larger. All four models handled it without any issues. This is worth noting since earlier models often struggle to correctly compare decimal numbers. We also covered the logic category with several questions. One question in particular has proven tricky for many models, but Nemotron handled it well or as well as others. Um, its performance in logic was on par with other models, delivering similar results throughout. The final benchmark area we tested was coding. Among the models, GPT-401 stood out with several, several one-shot solutions to our coding challenges. In contrast, Nemotron didn't deliver a single solution that fully resolved any of our coding problems. However, I found Nemotron's approach to coding particularly noteworthy. Especially for more complex coding projects, it provided a clear structure and a well-organized overview from the start. It even set up directories and frameworks in a way that felt very systematic and helpful, something I didn't see as much in other models. So while Nemotron couldn't score that many points on our coding questions, I found its methodology and organization to be a standout feature, making it a very pleasant model to work with. To wrap up, Nemotron 70B showed strong performances in logic, physics and math. So overall, it's really a powerful model. However, its coding abilities were a bit disappointing. Despite its structured approach, it couldn't deliver functional solutions at all, where other models succeeded after one shot. Here's the overall performance. GPT-01 preview leads with just over 66%, followed by Claude Sonnet at a little above 50%. Quen comes in just under 50% and Nemotron finishes at around 45%. That's their total score across our benchmark. That's it guys, this was our video on the upgrade the server build with the M40 GPUs and the benchmarking of Nemotron 70p. Thank you so much to everyone who watched until the end. We're already excited about testing new models like the recently released Quen 2.5 coding model that was uh, refined and we'll definitely dive into those soon. Until then, see you in the next video. Tell them